Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to USD 435 Update. It is May 2nd. It's a little dreary outside today, and there are some speculation that we might have some poor weather. So we're just kind of waiting to, to see what transpires. Thankfully, today is Wednesday, and uh, we don't have a lot of activities going out of town. So most kids will be home in a good time this evening and be safe at their houses. So we're always, yeah. always happy we can do that. I am here today with Mr. Ethan Gruen. He is the principal at Eisenhower Elementary, and you've been principal now. This is completion of your second yeah. year. So um, he is going to visit with you about a couple of things that are going on at Eisenhower. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the new playground equipment that the board approved. Yep. And then later in the program, we're going to get into a little bit about our multi-tiered system of support. And you heard about that last month at McKinley with regards to math and we want to just you know to continue to let you know that we want every child to succeed and we put in support structures so that they get the pieces they need so they can succeed so that's our goal so first of all let's talk a little bit about the playground sure. equipment yeah. and uh, talk about the process <clears throat> that we went yeah. through in order to figure out what the needs are at Eisenhower all right yeah so uh, the biggest thing was the kids had some things to do outside. They had a big slab, they had swings, they had the tetherball, basketball, mm -hmm. they did a lot of four square, did some football and things, but they really enjoyed the hill. And so we started off first looking at, could we do something with our hill? And uh, what we found out was that it's, you know, it might look steep, but it's just not quite steep enough to do a slide or something like that. So we kind of went back to the drawing board for uh, looking at really what was available. Um, you know, after talking to the board some last year, we really decided we just need to find out what is it that kids really wanted. So I created a little survey that we gave all the fourth and fifth grade kids, and it really still tied in exactly with where they were at a year ago. They wanted something to climb on, and they wanted something to slide down. You know, we couldn't put a slide on the hill, but they still wanted to have some sort of slide. So. Um, after some various times talking with the board and talking with some different uh, playground companies, we found out that it was going to be a little more expensive, I think, than what we originally thought. And uh, there was a subcommittee of the board, including mm -hmm. yourself, that right. met with me and we had some various conversations. Um, and we finally just settled on um, a design that had both the, the, the climbing as well as the slide where they, there's a rope climbing structure that they'll be able to climb on and get up pretty high. And then if they don't really want to get down on the ground, there's other structures that kind of get it over to where the slides are. And this, the slides, it's a double slide and um, it kind of curves around. Uh, I think one of the board members said they thought it'd be fun if kids could race themselves, each other mm -hmm. down this. So I think that'll be good. Um, but that's part of phase one. And uh, we looked at a couple phases for the playground. So phase one is what should be installed this summer, and that will be the climbing structure and the slide. But then phase two uh, incorporated three what they call zip crews, or like zip lines, that will be uh, available to kids. And part of the thing there, um, two of the lines will be for just the, the average student, and then the third one would have a um, a chair for kids who maybe couldn't stand or sit, you know, be more of a chair for like a wheelchair mm -hmm. student or something like that. So more an, uh, an accessible portion mm -hmm. of the playground. Um, then we also looked at a couple swings that would be more f accessible as well. Um, what, what we decided um, was that phase one would be done this summer, phase two would be done this summer as well, but the, what the board wanted to see is if the community would like to come together because this really, while it is a school playground, it's a community playground. Right. And the kids within this area can come and play on that playground really at any point uh, during the day, especially in the summertime, that they wanted to. So there's kids out there that play basketball, use the swings and various things. And so now when there's a playground, they would have that advantage as well. And it's been kind of an ongoing partnership, I believe, with Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. And so phase two, will happen this summer as well if the funding, if the comes, funding comes through. Right. Yeah. And so I don't I don't honestly know completely where we are with that. That's mm -hmm. probably more your your thing to speak to. Well we have some leads. Okay. Uh, nothing confirmed at this point, but we have some leads on some different funds that might be available uh, to help towards that phase sure. two of the project. Okay. 
Um, you know, one of the things during a snowstorm, you know, you talk about the slide on the hill, um, you drive by and there's, there's kids with their sleds and they're right. sliding down the hill. So, um, you know, maybe a permanent snowmaking machine would be <laughs> yeah. kind of nice too to have on the hill, but, yeah. but that's uh, not possible, obviously. Yeah. But, um, but you talk about inclement weather. So something else we did this year, um, we had a, a site council parent share that one of the things her children really enjoyed doing was a game called Gaga -ga Ball. Mm -hmm. And so the Woods instructor at the high school, along with one of his sons, uh, built us a Gaga -ga pit, which if you drive by, you'll see a wooden structure out on our, our playground, and that's the Gaga -ga pit. And the best way I can describe Gaga -ga Ball is it's kind of a cross between dodgeball and foursquare. Mm -hmm. um, but with inclement weather, we also purchased an indoor Gaga -ga pit that came after the weather started getting nice. So we haven't officially used it for an indoor recess. I know the after school program has used it once or twice, but mm -hmm. it's, it'll be something that we have available in the gym when the weather's too poor to go outside. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, but the playground is really shaping up. Um, I think that'll be exciting next year for the kids when they come back to school to have some playground structure out there besides what we have right now. Um, and I have nothing to do but to say thank you to the board for approving that purchase. Yeah, well, so. they're about the kids. That's right. So, well, next we're <clears> gonna <throat> talk a little bit about our MTSS structures. And again, MTSS stands for Multi-Tiered System of Supports. And um, I just wanna have Mr. Gruen visit a little bit about how that looks here. And then we're gonna visit with a teacher in the sure. classroom and get her perspective as well. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about how MTSS is structured. Right. So we, we've had, for the last two years, we've had fourth and fifth grade MTSS at different times of the day, just how their schedule f met. Um, we've had reading and math, uh, about 30 minutes each. Um, fourth grade has <coughs> had math MTSS before lunch and reading MTSS later in the afternoon, whereas fifth grade had math and reading MTSS really back to back in the afternoon. Um, I had some staff go to an MTSS symposium down in Wichita last fall, and they came back with the idea of building wide MTSS. And so we have spent most of this year talking about that and how could that benefit our kids, what would be the pros, what would be the cons, and we're still kind of, kind of moving through that a little bit. Um, but we opted, once state assessments were over, and once we had our spring AIMS testing done, look at our groups, and then try this week um, a building one MTSS. And what that did is it changed our schedule. We opted to go where we have all fourth and fifth graders with MTSS first thing in the morning. So they go to homeroom, we get through announcements and that sort of thing, but then instead of moving into first hour reading, they go right into reading MTSS, where then they, they break out into the groups, and then after th roughly 28, 30 minutes, then they shift and go to their math groups. What I like about it, or one of the main things I like about it, is it allows us to do cross-grade grouping. Mm -hmm. So if a student is moving much higher than a fourth grade reading and they're in fifth or even higher, we can pair them with some kids at that same level of fifth grade. And vice versa, if they're lower, we can, we can have groups lower. The other big piece of this is we, we have 23 individuals that can assist with teaching groups. Before, we were at only about 10 or 11 people that could assist with groups, I believe. And so this has really opened it up. It's allowed for smaller group sizes, which I think would then give us greater benefit to hit some of those benchmarks for kids okay. and make up some of that, that loss. Mm -hmm. What we're kind of working through, obviously, are some of the glitches with the schedule. Right. And uh, the teacher might talk a little bit more about that. She's had some conversations with the students. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting. We're planning to get together once this week's over, staff. And I, I, when I say staff, I'm talking all my staff, my janitor, my cooks, everybody, because it's affected everybody, mm -hmm. whether it be the lunchtime or the inability to clean the floors first thing in the morning. It's just, it's affected everybody. So I want to get everybody's feedback on sure. how it's gone. Mm -hmm. But I personally believe it's gone pretty smoothly. Very I've heard good. some good feedback from staff so far. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll take a break here, and then we'll go visit with Mrs. Signer. That's right. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll be back in a few.
Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Boost-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discrete access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Boost powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Boost. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. All right, we are down here in fifth grade with Mrs. Signer, one of our uh, ELA teachers. And Mrs. Signer, if you could just tell us a little bit more about what the multi-tiered system of support is and what are the benefits of that. Okay, multi-tiered system of support is where we um, individualize instruction for students. During that time, um, we specifically target what that student needs in reading and math at their level. They go with teachers during that time into small groups um, and really work on the skills that um, they need to be successful in school. And do you have a specific example of something we can share that would show how we've seen that go, maybe with our reading groups? Okay. Um, right now, um, within Eisenhower, we are working in fourth and fifth grade. We basically have two different groups. Um, we have a comprehension group and a fluency group. Um, and we have a, a success story within the fluency group. Um, during that time, we work on um, making sure that the kids read like they speak to a friend, that they're fluent, they use expression. Um, and so during that time, we've had kids, um, when we are really honing in on that skill, we've had kids go from 80 words a minute clear up to about 125, 130, just from having small groups um, and that teacher spending one-on-one -on -one time specifically targeting the skills that that student needs um, during that time to be a successful um, fluency reader. So we've seen with the multi-tiered system of support, there are smaller groups with one, sometimes two teachers co-teaching together, and we are able to help students progress further within their education because of the small groups and teachers. Okay, so we've made some changes this week with regards to our, the time of day and how we do our groups. What, what successes with that have you heard about, or maybe specifically from the kids, what have you heard from the kids about the schedule change and, and what's working? Okay, usually our uh, multi-tier system of support was in the afternoon and we have switched it this week to the morning, the first hour of the day. Um, I, the first day, knew that I really liked it. Um, it not only switched up our schedule, but the kids said, um, during the first hour of the day, they're usually in one class during that whole hour. Um, this way, they spend about 28 minutes in math, MTSS, and then 28 minutes in reading, MTSS. And they're able to move to a different group after that 20 minutes. So they had said that um, they were more awake at that time, um, that they were able to move around more during that time, going from one class to another, and that they thought that having it in the morning prepared them for their core math time um, or their core reading time later in the day. Okay, yeah, very good. So, so would you predict that we may be looking at that change permanently next year? I would predict that we will. Okay. Um, talking to staff, staff is really excited about it as well. Um, we feel like that this week it has developed more of a community within Eisenhower. Um, Fourth and fifth grade, usually we separated ourselves for that time. We have grouped fourth and fifth graders together, depending on their levels. And fourth and fifth grade teachers are sometimes teaching together, whereas we usually don't teach with fourth grade teachers. We're able to teach with them. Um, some fourth grade teachers may have fifth graders in their room. Some fifth grade teachers have fourth graders. So we're able to get to know some of those fourth graders as a fifth grade teacher. Some of those fourth grade teachers who had the fifth graders last year are able to kind of reconnect. And so we've kind of developed more of a community. There's not such a div divide between fourth and fifth grade. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, once again, this is Mrs. Signer down here in fifth grade, and we appreciate you uh, for sharing this morning and then all you do for our kids. Thank you. All right. When it comes to connecting your world, what's your bottom line? Controlling how, when, and where I watch my favorites. Reliable connection to work at home. 
having options to fit my lifestyle. High speed internet so the fun never stops. Streaming on multiple devices with no buffer. At Eagle Communications, meeting your wants, your needs, your way is our bottom line. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Well, you've just heard from Mrs. Signer, and uh, we're very proud of the work that the staff here at Eisenhower is doing to help every kid succeed. And I just wanted to thank the community. This is going to be my last show. I am um, shoot. <laughs> uh, retiring after this, after this school year. And thank the community and the parents for entrusting me in uh, helping with the lives of their kids, their most precious natural resources. And I just want to let them know that we've got a new interim coming on and he's going to do a really nice job for the, for the community. And uh, as always, we have fantastic staff. They work hard for your kids. And uh, I look forward to uh, watching and seeing how things progress. I'm not leaving the community, so I will always bleed orange. And um, <laughs> I'm just looking forward to watching what the, the ne next phase of Abilene Public Schools. So thank you for joining us. And that's a, a wrap okay. for USD 435 update.